When it goes into the refrigerator overnight, you come up with something that looks like this. Now this one I intentionally left a little bit wet because I wanted to see what, what was gonna happen. So let me show you, yours should not be this wet. I'm experimenting with wetter doughs right now. But if I can get this, this is full of air bubbles right now. If I can get this onto this pan, I can go straight to the oven. If I have to smash this and smush it, which is gonna deflate it and take all of the air out, all the gases out, then I'm gonna to need to let it sit again and let it rise before I put it in the oven. Let me see what I can do with this. And then that next dough is gonna be a little stiffer. So I can work with that. I'm gonna put some cornmeal down here. If you didn't have cornmeal, you could use a little bit of flour to keep it from sticking. But here I go, see if I can get this out without smushing it. Oh, this is nice. I, I, I unintentionally grabbed one of the bowls. There's the nice handle on the bottom like that. Okay, I kind of like that rough look right there. I can still see that it has plenty of air in it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this. When I, I'm gonna score the, um, the bread, so, but I'm not gonna push on it. I'm just gonna let it drag like I'm, like I'm playing a violin. Just the weight of the knife alone is gonna be enough to put some beautiful score marks in this. And I'm gonna make this like a rustic loaf. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more cornmeal on there. This stuff's dirt cheap, but dirt cheap. It's quite cheap. You can get um, some Centuries or Rayleigh's for a couple bucks or stop by school. I've got a bunch of it. It's gonna make it nice and crusty. And now, like I'm playing a violin, I'm just gonna drag, drag, drag. And sometimes less is more. I'm gonna call that good right there. Let's take a look at this dough. It's not going to be as wet. This one here is going to be a little bit easier to work with. Put a little bit of flour, not too much. That's almost too much right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some smaller rolls out of these, which means I don't care if I deflate it. In fact, I'm going to intentionally deflate it. See how much easier for that is for me to get out? Now I'm gonna make this into about, um, I'm gonna make this into six different rolls. So I'm gonna go down the center, like this. And now I'm gonna go like this, like this, this, like this. Okay, I'm gonna make this into a longer, um, a longer size roll. I'm gonna to try to even it out. See so I just kind of did a little deal like that. And then you take it and you curl it back on itself like this. I want a smooth side up. Sort of forming a line there. Okay, that's that looks pretty nice. Now see how small that is compared to that? That still has air in it. I still has gases in it, I should say. So I'm gonna add a little bit more cornmeal over here. I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call this good. Now these ones, let's make this into a, um, I'm gonna make this into a, like a dinner roll. So watch what I do. I turn the inside out, and then everything is gonna be A-OK. -okay. Because I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make like the A-OK -okay here and I'm gonna scrunch the bottom. Now it's okay if the bottom is knotty like that. Just make the top pretty. Maybe I'll leave this one a little bit square. You can kind of mess with it and play around a little bit. Now remember, these are gonna double in size again. See how thin that is? Let's score that one. Let's see what that one turns out looking like.
Okay, this is take number two. This is after I shaped the bread and baked some bread this morning. You can see these are the rolls I made. <clears throat> these are, they should be double the size. Remember the square one I made? I scored it. And you can see how the scores are tearing apart. So you can see the expansion. This was like the thickness of a garden hose. And now, you know, look how thick it is. It's thicker than that knife. And these rolls have a nice rise on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven and leave it in a 425 degree oven for probably about 25 to 30 minutes. Here we go. And here is the bread that I formed earlier. This is the one that I said was so wet. And that is a delicious piece of bread right there. This is the kind of thing, <clears throat> they call this artisan bread. It has a nice hollow sound to it. Like you're tapping on a, uh, on a football. It's got a nice crust on it. Let's see how it tastes. I, I'm hoping it's done all the way through because this was so moist. Go right through the middle of this and make sure it's cooked all the way. And it is. That's beautiful. Okay, here you can see the rolls that I shaped this morning. And this is the one I left kind of square. And this is the one that I tried to make long. See how they have that beautiful tearing along there? And it's nice and crusty. And that's a delicious roll. And then these are more like your dinner ones here. When I showed you how knotty they were on the bottom, <clears throat> didn't look right but you see all of that just bakes out of it it just becomes part of the um, part of the roll so these are these are wonderful nice chewy big big air pockets in there chewy crusty so now I am gonna pop it I'm not gonna worry about um, about popping the air sacs because I'm gonna wind up having to rework it anyway. So I'm gonna go right down the middle. If you don't have one of these bench cutters, which, you, which you're not going to, you can use a knife. Just don't mess up your parents' um, good surfaces. So I'm gonna make two loaves of bread. I'm gonna set this aside. I kinda wish I didn't have the cornmeal on there now. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I'm gonna redo this. And I'm gonna gently Shake it. Try to get it even. Then I want to make it round. So I'm going to take my fingertips and start turning it over on itself. It's just sticky enough that I can turn it over. But that seam right there, I want to hide that seam. <clears throat> Go over like this. What can you guys see out of that? Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks great. And this seam right here, I'm going to put onto the bottom. Oh yeah. And I can go down in here like this, and I can clamp, crimp that a little bit. And watch this. Oh yeah, okay. I probably should have had a little flour on here because this is starting to stick. So I'm gonna use this to get up to remove that or at home, you guys would probably have to go like that with a knife. And on we go, beautiful. Once again, gently. How exciting is this? Okay. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and do my little scoring here. And then I'm gonna set this aside and wait for it to double in size. And we are on again with bread just having proofed. You see how the scoring marks I made across here started to rip open as the bread expanded. That looks beautiful. Um, they've definitely got plumper and rounder. And of course, this is not a scientific you know, test here, but it seems like they were about you know, yay big across. So they basically almost doubled in all dimensions and they're very spongy. You don't want to knock them down right now because they have all those good gases in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into the oven with these and we'll see you here in a few seconds, time elapse, when I pull these out and you'll see how beautiful they are. In baking, it is a good idea whenever possible to rotate and change shelves, rotate your, uh, your baked products. So this has been in for about 13 minutes at uh, 400 degrees. I can see they're starting, they've got a full rise. They're, they're nice and, and tall and they're starting to brown a little bit. So because they're browning, I know they're gonna hold their structure. If you pull things out too early sometimes, they, they get full of air and then they deflate before the walls and the structure of the bread have fully set. I know these are set, I'll show you. Oh, and look at that, okay? So I came out like this, I'm gonna separate it a little bit. I came out like this, so now I'm gonna go back in the other way. Set my timer for another 10 minutes. That looks wonderful, nice golden brown. But as you look on the bottom, still a little pale underneath there. I think these need to dry out a little bit more. This one has a little bit more color on it. But we're gonna give those a little bit more time. Okay, that was about five minutes more. And you can see we've got a little bit more of a dark brown color. And, ah, okay, we got some browning on the bottom. I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna call that good. Okay, so these loaves of bread have cooled and you can see they look wonderful. Um, I'm gonna cut right into the middle here and we'll check it out. Oh, beautiful, fabulous. You see how they have nice big, um, nice big airy bubbles in there? And you got that one there. That should have had a perfect rise. It's got a nice crust around it. Um, I believe I oversalted this. I, I think I did not cut back the salt for this recipe. But in terms of the way it baked, I, I think this is just great. It couldn't be better.